So wonderful to, to it just warms your heart, you know. So that's what I want to do. And I know that's what you're doing. What do you want to do? Feel like Jesus, and if He is so good today. Does anybody have a testimony that you'd like to share with us today? What God has done for you? Thank you, Jesus. Another somebody. Oh, I'll jump up at once. Christmas, and they, I don't know if they knew our connection or not, but they said, man, boy, he said, that was the name of your gosh, that's the only reason I know his name, they said his name, he said, that guy opened his mouth and three or four words in, he said, I could just feel the Lord pouring out of that man, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, I do want to testify too, because yesterday, the Thursday, I left this way, and I went back that way, trash truck at Brother Rick's house on the road, and 
Yeah, you know, that sucker, he just pulled out of Rick's house, sitting to look one way or the other, and I could see him coming through the trees up there. And he had his guy sitting on the back of that truck. And I had to lock up my brakes. I had to slam on my brakes. I almost ran in the back of that guy and just, you know, said Jesus and scared me to death. And I just thank God I was able to stop fast enough. And I was able to thank God that at his next stop when I got out, I went and told him he what he was doing. And I did it in a very nice and loving way and said, I could have killed that guy in the back of the truck, man. Please be careful. It didn't work. It really worked. Anyone else going to test him? One thing that came to my mind when he was saying that was just never be ashamed to know that you've got Jesus and you can give him to somebody. We're not boasting. We're not saying we're anybody. We're not trying to be anybody. But if you have Jesus, be proud and be honored to know that you have Jesus as children. And that, like he said, Jesus has come by to visit you today. Well, if you've got Jesus, he's right there to visit you. You know, and touch your knees. So don't always be proud. Always be proud of all. I love Jesus. And I'm going to share him. Amen. Any prayer requests today that you need to take? Well, I know uh, when my uh, former co worker, she's had a left pass away suddenly, and the family's uh, a little bit shot of that, so she asked for prayer. Lord, we know we lay them at your feet. We believe every one right now. Lord, to be made whole by your wonderful power. Lord, even the declaration of your name is wonderful. And counselor and prince. It all is in you, Jesus. One touch, one word. As we pray as a body, your body right now. Every fever, every pain, every other. Lord, if it's not your will at this time. It's not your timing, whatever the, the question or the, the what it may be. We ask you to enter into every room. 
if it's a hospital room or a bedroom or a car, wherever they're at, go right now. Lord, just like you walked into Brother Hall in that room. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, walk in every room. Lay your hands upon them as we speak. Let your voice speak healing. We speak healing. Let your miracle power. We take care of every need. Lord, you know every one of them intimately. You know every one of them personally. Before we even ask these requests today, God, you are already working. We give you praise right now and believe by faith in you alone, Lord, that there will be reports of being healed and touched. We thank you for it today. Let a complete healing come to Brother Lester and his voice. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's okay here to take the time. You can reach. I remember all the notes was on the corner. I cannot find my way
something that I had any plan or was that any vision. But Lord, everything that you have given us throughout the time, even from the very beginning of this church, even until now, Lord, it has had and continues to have a plan making and molding of our lives, not just individual lives, but Lord, bringing us to this wonderful time in you, this wonderful day, Lord, to be a great part of your kingdom at this hour, Lord, just before the great return, Lord, we're so thankful all the vision and desire that you've put in my life, Sister Vanity's life, and others. And I know I can relate to our life ever since, or our lives since we were just children. Lord, we realize now it wasn't just our personal desires, but you placed that calling upon us. You placed those desires in our heart and our spirit. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in every life here. All the lives, and we hope that we touch, or you touch, through us, and that we touch many lives, even in the days to come. Lord, we, I believe, I know I may be saying a lot of what I believe, Lord, but We've had some great times in America in times past. It's a great salvation, deliverance, great healings and miracles, but I believe the greatest is yet to come. Not only for world missions, but for even for America. Thank you, dear God. I believe the greatest is yet to come for this very church, this area, this nation. Lord, have your way today. Let your liberty come. Lord, that we might not quench, but feel your presence among us. Lord, from the babies on up, dear Lord, to the elders, we thank you, dear God, and let that word be planted in our spirit, our soul, the seed, dear Lord. Oh, Lamb of God, that the anointing come that we might speak your word that our ears might hear and our hearts might receive and that deliverance and salvation miracles and healings be present today in your holy name dear God we thank you we also ask dear Lord that you bless in the offerings today Lord, as we have opportunity to bless you back for you. So wonderfully blessing and prospering us, prospering us in our soul and our physical bodies, but also, Lord, in the substance that we need, not only for ourselves in this life, but for others, and also, dear God, for the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. We do love you. We praise you. We magnify you, dear God. Have your way. Have your way in the rest of this service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Could you just slip both hands up and tell him how wonderful he is? Tell him how wonderful he is to you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I love you. I love you, Lord, with all my heart. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to take just a moment to receive the offering. And I know God is going to uh, smile, continue to smile. Thank you, Lord. How many is glad? Thank you. For God to smile upon everything. And we want Him to smile upon our giving. And uh, if we give it in faith and joy. We don't always have to wait. I believe in the Lord speaking to us, speaking to our hearts, that not always 
He likes to trust us just to, from our spirit and our God's a giver. And how many want that spirit and that nature to be manifested in us as well? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. If you would just come and bring your offering, may God bless you. Thank you.
I teach on it. I love to teach on it. And I can even teach on it more whenever it's presented uh, for other ministers, ministries, pastors, and so forth. But he did speak to my heart many years ago when we were still in evangelism. And if he said, he just said, people to meet our needs and uh, to uh, give them, in other words, only when I really had a need or had a purpose to let it be known. And uh, we do, I don't feel to just specify exactly what it is at this moment, uh, but uh, we did have a great financial need. And I just got a few envelopes here. Uh, later on at the end of the service, I'll go ahead and place the offering container here for you to those that would love to bless us i know god will uh, truly truly smile and bless you but i believe i have 11 minutes here that i'd like for you just to take no specific amount for it but just hold it here and preach and thank you pray over if you feel to put something in it just ask the lord how he would lead you few words of this song kept coming to me. And it was just these words, what kind of man was this Jesus? How many love him with all of your heart? And sit down on the 
things that have full control in our lives. I love to search in the scriptures, do just that, to see what kind of man Jesus was. How many know he's the same today? As he was then. If we want to really see who he is, we have to go all the way back. Farther back than when Jesus of Nazareth was born, we have to go all the way back to before the world was. And he knows that the glory that he left, he's returned back to that glory. I thank you so much. Praise God. In uh, John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved you that he gave you Jesus. John 1 and 29, the latter part of that verse. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away your sin. These are very, very precious verses. There might would be some other verses that would work the same way in this behalf, but these two verses even though I minister, I begin for quite a while, been beginning the messages with them. It's two verses that I can read every time, just like it's fresh and brand new, like I haven't read it before. One of the reasons I believe that there also is people that may be hearing this message with the tools we have nowadays. That the message can go out and uh, you never know just where it might be shared or taken out on social media and all we thank God. There's many lives that can be touched. I didn't have this so much in the notes but I feel Continue from John 3, 16, verse 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned. How many thank God for that? But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten. Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. I love it that the Lord Jesus is speaking this Himself. And uh, let us know that the Father, God, so loved the world. And I speak it as you. For God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son, which is Jesus. He gave you Jesus. That if you believe, He said, Whosoever. How many is glad as whosoever? It's just not something somebody already handpicked and everybody else left that. But whosoever believeth in him should not perish and have everlasting life. And I'm going to re reread and repeat verse 17 again. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. I wish all of us that were believers, and especially all ministers, would really place deep in their heart this understanding. This understanding. There's, I know that as ministers we have to bring knowledge and understanding, have to bring light on righteousness and unrighteousness. We have to, even as parents, it's an obligation God intends for us to teach our children. But not just that that is righteous and to uh, shun that that is unrighteous, but the full depth of it is the very um, heart of Jesus. And to come into such a relationship with Him. Not just the teaching of do's and don'ts and righteousness versus unrighteousness, but to really come into the true, I don't like to use the word concept, but the true vision, the true heart of God. Luke 19 and verse 10, I believe it is, said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That which was lost, the purpose. I want to minister, we're going to go into some more verses of Scripture here in a moment, but I want to minister. And behold the Lamb's love for the sinner. And then I have two words there, Jesus wept. You know, for quite some time, especially with the things that was hitting our nation, things that were hitting the whole world, that the Lord kept impressing us stronger and stronger and stronger in the depth of beholding the Lamb of God is to look and to see what He is doing. To look through the scriptures and see what he did during the times as he uh, was manifest to the world for that three and a half years. And of course as the storm was hitting with the pandemic and all the different things and all the concerns and worries and fears that way the Lord kept giving us messages to behold Him. Not just in words to behold Him or the focus of our faith and heart, but to, to actually just see what He's doing. And we know that from the glory that He's in right now, there's something so great and wonderful even as he does the individual things for the individual person and families meeting your needs from the smallest to the greatest that there is such a great plan being carried out worldwide and great revival in the preparation. Not only this is something that only God can do, not only the preparation for His people and for those to be used and for the army of God. But the preparation of men's hearts. The preparation of, of young and old, male and female. The preparation all over the world that God is doing. If there's ever a time for us to apply ourselves if there's ever a time to reach and see what kind of man he is, what kind of man he was 2,000 years ago, that we might would follow the pattern. How many believe it's a pattern that God has given for us to be like it? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm going to give a verse of scripture here in a little bit. We get it quite often. But I, 
I don't like to give it for the purpose of like a commandment, you better do it or whatever. But yet, I want to give it as the Lord knew and even if he gave it his commandment, I want to give it today as if we really, truly want to be like Jesus. We're not going to be able to accomplish it any other way. And I believe there's three places that it was spoken. Uh, we could go to Matthew 16 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If we are going to have, and today we may be preaching more on his compassion, Jesus wept. But if we're going to be like him in any way, then the only way that we're going to be able to come into the place with Him molding and making us, of course, is surrender, humbleness, and all, but it's to be like Him. The only way we can be like Him, and I don't want to break it down today, but maybe another teaching another time, but to deny ourselves. We've got to have self-denial. You can break it down yourself. Begin to think about what denying yourself, how that and where that would bring you into. If we don't deny ourselves, and we don't, if you want to, we can say take up the cross, or we can say crucify the flesh. If we don't do these things, then we can't bring ourselves to a place to follow. Meaning that we follow his actions, follow his ways, learn of him. He said for us to, if we were, our day later and so forth, come unto him and give us rest. He wasn't just speaking about things of the natural. He was, you understand the battle of the ages. It's the battle between the flesh and the spirit and ever, ever individual. Every generation. All going to have that battle. And throughout the battle, the spiritual man has to become victorious. If there's any Joys, peace, righteousness. How many thank God for salvation, redemption, deliverance, everything that Jesus bought and paid for? How many is thankful? But in Him was God reconciling us. Pulling us, drawing us back to himself. I'm thankful today for my salvation. I'm thankful today that because of the blood of Jesus, that I don't have to perish. I'm thankful today that, again, because of his forgiveness and the power of his blood, that I don't have to go to a hell that was prepared for the devil, that heaven is my home. How many of you are glad for that? But there's something, and I don't mean to miss words, but there's something that's more precious to me and more valuable to me in my heart, my desire, and that is the relation with Him. He didn't have to, on our part, provide or to open the door for us to have relation with him. Not just any kind of relation. You may disagree with me and that's fine. But if God 
was satisfied with the relationship he had with man in the garden, then he would have bound the devil right there. He would have never allowed temptations. He would have never allowed evil. But he wasn't satisfied with that relationship. We won't go into all the depth of the revelation of it, but through God's plan, He finally had a relationship with man that he had desired and had planned all along. And that was the day that Jesus was baptized. Hallelujah. I said the day that Jesus was baptized and the Lord, Malachi prophesied, the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. And so God for the first time, become one in the spirit, the heart of man. And everywhere Jesus went, God could be felt. Hallelujah. No longer behind the veil. No longer hidden there. But how many thank God that the purpose and the plan of God was not just let us go through, let man go through some things to where he was uh, taken away from the relationship with God and brought back to that same relationship. But God wanted it to be a new relationship. He wanted it to be through the redemptive blood of Jesus. And it was a relationship that not just God on the outside or with us, but God in us. Let me thank the Lord for that. Not just God with us. That's great. That is so great. But there's not a satisfaction. A full satisfaction doesn't come by you just being in church and around church people and around the presence of God and feeling Him from the outside. But the full satisfaction of our soul and our spirit comes whenever He enters in. What we call spirit Field, that the Spirit of God enters in. How many thank the Lord that through Christ, through Christ, Jesus put it so wonderful. It's us and Him and Him and us. Him and the Father. Praise the Lord. Don't you love Him today? How many hunger for a deeper walk with Him? Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. How many of you do want to be like Jesus? So you see, we don't have to figure it out. We don't have to wonder how. We don't need man for man's doctrine and viewpoints to try to teach us and show us and work it out. He said he gave gifts unto men. And so through the gifts of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, then through the anointing, we are brought into salvation, we're brought into relationship, and then that is uh, nurtured, and we grow, and we get closer and closer and closer. We don't start out somewhere trying to get to a place so that, oh, I'm going to grow to a place that my sins will be forgiven. We start out with our sins forgiven. How many is thankful for that? We start out. When we accept Him and repent of our sins, then thank the Lord. He said, we repent, be baptized in His name, then our sins will be remitted, and we're so thankful. How many thank God for that? That your sins have been remitted, the whole the Lamb of God that takes away all your sin. We can start out with a perfect relationship with Him. And we can keep it as such through Him. How many is thankful for it? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. Speaking about Jesus becoming our high priest. Said, for we have not 
and high priests which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. We don't have a high priest that can't be touched. We have a high priest that not only can, but is touched with our feelings, our infirmities, with all that we go through, with all that we need. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, I took a moment to look at some scripture through all of these King James Version and everything that uh, was a top of the Bible, which instead of being placed from Genesis to Revelations in that sense, that it's whatever topic that you wanted to uh, look at the scriptures. And I looked up on compassion. And it really touched me. Uh, even though I knew in all my life of reaching into the Word and studying and receiving to myself. You know, compassion is, we can kind of sum it up in one word, but it's sensitivity. And it's mainly, I guess, defined as emotion. Emotional aspects and the sufferings of others. And whatever anybody's going through, how many believe that there's no greater compassion than the compassion of Jesus? And I begin to look through those verses of Scripture, and sometimes this is the kind of spiritual food that just touches me so much. I'll just read Scripture after Scripture after Scripture of whatever it is that I'm reaching for or needing to be fed. And the scripture after scripture tells of different ones. We know that even when the scripture didn't speak of it or didn't use that exact words, Jesus had compassion on all, didn't he? There was one that he had compassion on and healed him of leprosy. One that he had compassion on and he touched their eyes and they were made whole. The eyes received sight. In so many different instances, of the compassion that Jesus had. I want to take just a moment to take us back to where he was. I don't want you to misunderstand about today and after the cross and that we are not subject to the law as far as the law that was written on tablets of stone and the law it was a holy law because it was God's law. It was given to Moses for the people. But how many know that I believe it's even in Hebrews it tells us that through the Lord Jesus we now have a, uh, a better a better way. And that is that we have His law written upon our hearts. And we have a pattern of Jesus who satisfied and fulfilled all the righteousness and said he was going to fulfill all the righteousness of the law in us. If you want to get technical, then we're still under a similar system because the high priest, the, when he became the high priest, he remained the high priest until he died. And that's the same system we're in now getting quiet now. What are you talking about? Jesus has become our high priest. And we know he's not going to die. He overcome that, didn't he? So he's going to remain. We don't ever have to look for another high priest. How many is thankful for our high priest? Which is Jesus. Is it alright if we lift him up today? You can't go wrong lifting up Jesus. He's been exalted. Praise the Lord.
in all In uh, Luke chapter 19, I started to go there. Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. We can look at verse 28. When he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. He's making his entrance in. It's called a time for entry. And uh, he was making his entrance in. Verse 41, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Jesus wept. I know we relate to what we call the shortest verse, or at least since it's been uh, numbered and put into chapters and verses, beginning it was so. John 11 and 35 spoke that Jesus wept. It shows his compassion. It shows he was so touched because he knew why he had allowed Lazarus to die. And now his sisters are just so much hurt and so much mourning. First thing he was hit with, they said, Jesus, if you would have been here. And so you could imagine that he had a purpose in waiting. He waited. We've ministered on that before. But when he was come near to this city, he wept over it. Saying, if thou hadst known, even now, this, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, now they are hid from thy eyes. As I began to mention a few minutes ago, about the things of the law then versus our day of grace and the time that we're in. That under the law, under the law, sin was directly involved and connected with a person's sickness. Or disease. So when anyone was sick or diseased, then they knew that they, it was part of the wages of sin. And something that they did brought on that sickness or that disease under the law. And so that's why that there was a man that was born blind. Whenever the Lord healed him, they asked the question, did, did his parents sin? Why was he born blind? Did his parents sin or did he sin while he was yet in his mother's womb? Jesus did not even address anything of the nature of sin. He just let them know that this is done for the glory of God. In other words, the healing brought about the glory of God. Other place that Jesus told a man, Thy sins have been forgiven. And they condemned Jesus. Who? What man can forgive sins? And he said, Well, oh, which is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Rise up and walk. And he told him to rise up and walk. You see, Every time that Jesus healed someone, how many of you healed whole multitudes? Every time during that three and a half years when he was healing someone, he was forgiving them of their sins. Forgiveness of sins didn't just come about when he went to the cross. 
He paid the, he paid the price so that all that believe could have their sins free. He removed all of our sins at the cross. But before the cross, he went about for three and a half years forgiving people their sins. When he healed the sick, the lady, why are you seeking this? Because I'm letting you know, behold the Lamb's love for the sick. He went about, and everyone, he wanted them healed. He doesn't want us to suffer. That's why we still have healings and miracles today. They're not directly associated like it was when you were under the law. Let me know that we're not under that law. But Jesus satisfied. I will say this. And I probably shouldn't say it today. But it should be it should be acknowledged and a concern. People think today that they can much more easily get away with sinning. The Bible said that God forbid that we sin. I can take you to a verse of scripture that lets you know that it's worse. It's worse for those that go against the Lord's word than it was for those that went against Moses' word. It's much more worse. You know why? Because there's been so much grace applied. Been so much mercy. And there's no one greater than Jesus. And so when we go against his word, but it doesn't bring immediate payment for sin. How many thank God that we are under a time of mercy and a time of grace? But if we abuse it, then the outcome and the reward for that is going to be horrible. Because, again, those that refuse Moses' word then they had to suffer the consequences. But now those that refuse Jesus were him being much greater than Moses, then that that we the consequences are eternal. Come on now. How many thank God for his mercy? How many thank God for his grace? Hallelujah. Behold the man's love for the sinner. Jesus wept. Jesus cried. I brought in a verse of scripture. I'm going to be closing in just a moment. But I brought in a verse of scripture because in this day and hour, what I see from many professing Christians, I'm going to say that, is, let me, let me reword it. Instead of saying what I'm seeing, I'm going to say what we need. How many believe we need more crime and less community? I'm going to put it that way. What we need, what we need is more crying and less committing. More repenting and less judging. How long has it been since we wept or cried? Lamented like Jeremiah. I'm going to ask you this. How long has it been since we or since you? I'm including all of us. How long has it been since you really wept? Or have you ever, have you ever really wept over him yet? Have you ever really wept over him yet? Have you ever really cried over Willika? Over our community, over, I'm talking about literally tears pouring down your face, like Jesus said. Probably been a lot that we could judge and condemn and so forth. There's something that I guess there's probably been many 
many people, many Christians, many ministers have quoted this. But Sister Vandiger, I know, and I, we adopted this a long time ago. We need to continue to hate the sin but love the sin. How many believe that? Love the sin. Now do you see why you can't do it? If you're self-promoting instead of self-denying. If you're going around saying there's no cost to bear, there's no price to pay. You know what's happening? Your flesh is just going to continue on. What we're winding up seeing in this day and hour, all across America, all across America for sure, we see it edging into other countries as well. But we are seeing men professing to be righteous. Male and female, when I say men. But they're going by their own opinionated and conceived man-made doctrine and teachings. And that comes about whenever we don't follow Jesus' direction. How many believe he knows exactly? There's no one knows greater than Jesus how for us to come into victory. Peace for yourself? How can we help others if we are not in a place of rest? How many wants to come into that place of rest? Hallelujah. I feel something today. I want to be like Jesus. I want to strive to be like Him. How many want to strive to be like Him? In order to be like Him, then we have to learn. There's a lot of people who want to be like him in ways of power for many times the wrong motives. Let me tell you something about compassion. Compassion doesn't just appear and disappear. It don't just come and go. When you have compassion, compassion is something so deep and from God. The Bible says Jesus looked upon the multitudes. And I possibly could have preached it this way, but I felt it just as his love for the sinner. Jesus wept. But in several of the verses of Scripture, I like the words not just compassion, but moved. Moved with compassion. One place they saw the multitude, and it was just like they was being scattered without a shepherd. And it said, He began to teach them. Hallelujah. Compassion will move you to do something to help. How many believe that? Amen. Don't wait till you see somebody in need or suffering before you try to get compassion. Reach in there to the heart of God. Begin denying yourself. Begin taking up your cross and then begin following Him. We can't follow Him 
without self-denial. It just doesn't work. Our flesh won't let us. Our flesh won't let us act as he acts, think as he thinks, move as he moves. The flesh can never inherit the kingdom of God. It can't inherit the things that it just doesn't and will never have the faculties that the spiritual man will. But we've got to apply. How many want to apply? Saints of God, I'm trying to close here. I would have rather been, and I, I come and pray and I was prepared and wishing I could just preach in a evangelistic, fire type message, but when it don't come, it just don't come. I tell you right now, there's a lot of hurting people. We are in an hour that there is a lot of hurting people. And you know who's going to win these people? People that care. People that are compassionate. And some of them are going to be won over to the wrong direction. They're going to be won to the wrong thing. They're going to be one to the wrong. I had myself a little question here in order to finish that. I had myself a little question. I probably need to say it more before I told you. Jesus started people that I mentioned a while ago it was the but I, I may word it a little bit differently but it was the religious people that took what they wanted out of the the word the law oh they try to put the strong stuff on other people but scriptures tell us that they wouldn't even touch them themselves some of the they put a lot of pressure and put a lot of things upon me. Why Jesus said, "All oh, these grass and all these things, you're, you know, heavy laden with all this that come unto me, I'll give you rest. Learn of me, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy, it's light. Oh, hallelujah!" There was something about Jesus that he reached. He didn't become like the sin. He didn't condone the sin. But he rather took and when he found them so deep in bondage, he said, I don't forget. Go and sin no more. The love, the forgiveness. People that were bound. There's somebody that teach and preach about the woman that was caught in adultery and how that they came and they were prepared and was going to stone her. And Jesus simply said, the one without sin, they had cast the first stone. I grew up heard a lot of preachers say, you know what, there wasn't anybody there that could cast the first stone. I learned later there was. There was one there that was without sin. One there that all he had to do was throw the first shot. But he chose. He chose to forgive. Honey can say that. It'd been easy just to blast at her, but she was already condemned. She was already going to be stoned. And he come along. And he saved her from the stone. He forgave her. He said, just, you know, don't, don't go do it any, anymore. And you know what? She never did. You know what she did from that day forward? From that day forward, she denied herself. 
And she took up her own cross. And she followed so close to Jesus. But sin couldn't in her back in. You have a problem with sin? Follow somebody that doesn't have. His name is Jesus. Get in there close to him. And if you don't quite know how, then get in there close to somebody that has found how. Someone says, oh, you're, you're getting, no, you're getting out of, out of the way. Now, that's what Paul said. He said, y'all want to follow the Lord? Well, he said, you just come follow me as I follow him. Y'all have any trouble with sin or any trouble not sinning? Get somebody to follow. You'll watch your steps. <laughs> Come on now. It's not only will help them, it'll help you. Right. Uh-oh. i got somebody watching me now. you got more watching than what you realize. Responsibility. All you want to preach, you just want to really be called to preach, apply yourself that much more. Someone said, well, I haven't been asked to preach. I haven't had an open door in a while. Get you a message anyway. Heard someone speaking, different ones speaking about testifying today. Did you know that every time that you witness or testify, act like that's a big crusade. I want to let y'all think about that a minute. Shouldn't you prepare? If you were going to preach a big crusade next week, how many of you would prepare? I see some heads shaking. I see one hand going up. How many would prepare? Well, what's the difference in a big crusade? If you had 10,000 people, that's 10,000 individual persons. They're not hearing you as 10,000. They're hearing you, each one of them, as one person. So if there's one person that the Lord says, well, I just don't know. I don't know if you... I hate it to relate to something secular, something carnal. There was a saying a few years ago, said, you build it, they'll come. You prepare, God will send somebody. You hear what I just said? If you wait, Till somebody comes, it may be too late for that person. That's right. So prepare ahead of time and God will either send you to somebody. He'll send you to that chariot. He'll have that chariot set and waiting for you to come and say, you know what you need? How can I unless somebody tell me? I don't know if he's talking about himself or somebody else. And so Philip joined himself to the chariot. Praise the Lord. I feel the Lord. How many of you feel him today? Praise God. How many would love to walk in the compassion that Jesus walked in? Amen. I want to walk in that compassion. Compassion is something that people can feel because it comes from the love of God. And the love of God is so powerful. You may not even know what you're feeling at the time, but how many has ever even made a statement about someone? Maybe you didn't even know them, and you just, and sometimes that's the best time to really feel it. You didn't really know them, but yet, after being around them, hearing them, their discussion with someone else, or their discussion with you, and that just being in their presence. How many ever made a statement? Man, I'll tell you what, that's just the most compassionate lady. Or that's just the most compassionate man. Wouldn't you like for somebody to say that about you after you walk away? Amen. You may never know they say it until you get to heaven. But I'll tell you what, that's a greater reward right there than anything else. Okay. Reward you with is just 
Acknowledge in the love of God in your life. Praise the Lord. How many love him with all your heart today? Praise God. Did you give him a, a good praise? Did you lift up your hands to Jesus? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. One of the most, I don't know if you would call it, uh, Acknowledgeable verses of scripture. One of the ones that touches me so much, I didn't even get it in, in ministry today, but it was when Jesus was looking out over the city again of Jerusalem. To Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how he spoke about all the bad that they did, shown to the prophets, and all this. He said, but how often, even though you've done all those things, how often would I have taken your children in just like a mother hen takes in her little chicks and brood? He said, but you would not. He wept. Many times he wept. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask this again. How many times have we wept over him now? I'm going to ask you. In a different way. As I close. How many will weep? How many will reach to the Lord? And ask God to help you. Help you. And we have many, many things going on right now in our community. Many things going on in our town. Many things going on amongst your friends. Many things going on with the devil's plans for your children. How long has it been since you wept over the school where they go? Or do you think you have any plans in the future to cry? To, to cry and ask God. To, we need revival, don't we? I said we need revival. Praise God. God bless you today. Um, I will take just a moment.